Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Crane, and today I'm going to talk to you about agile metrics, uh, especially using Safe, but also some of my own uh, some of my own stuff. I'm going to try to keep that to five minutes. So there's my timer. Uh, so agile metrics in five minutes. So first off, um, let's go into Safe, and I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Okay. Uh, so here we have uh, the Safe big picture um, and their metrics article. They recently changed this article um, and I never was a fan before and I'm a huge fan now. So um, in the past, what I learned was their metrics were largely about how well you're doing safe. And that's not really what I'm looking for <laughs> when I'm trying to improve a client. I'm trying to improve the, improve the way they, they are able to flow value. So the metrics left me flat. Well, now they have completely overhauled it and check it out. There are three kinds of metrics and, they, and these three kinds apply at every single level, at the team level, at the train level, at the large solution level, at the portfolio level. So it's always the same three. How you do the three changes, but the three categories are always the same. I have a very similar model and I'll show you that in a minute. So the three metrics are competency, flow, and outcomes. And so the idea here, competency measures how well you're doing agile, how well you're doing business agility in the case of SAFE. So the, that used to be all the metrics they had, but they've realized that's just one of three major kinds. And this has to accelerate if you want to accelerate your ability to deliver value. Um, in addition, we have flow metrics. Flow metrics allow us to understand how well we're getting value out. Um, and so uh, Mick Kirsten's book uh, has a lot to do with flow metrics. And if you read the rest of this article, you'll see competency metric examples. It's going to be those assessments and flow metric examples are, are going to match that projects or products book pretty well. And then finally, the outcome metrics. This is OK. So let's say that we teach you to do business agility. Let's say that your flow starts getting better. Well, that's already it seems like a good thing. But is it really outcomes is what is the actual business benefit that we get from that? So we need to trace all three of these metric types. And let me tell you something, they, they kind of go in an order. What happens is as an agile coach, I teach you a new competency. My entire uh, pocket coach app is about a list of hundreds of, of these different competencies you can learn. So I, tracking how many competencies you learn is how you track competency metrics. Flow then is how well you're getting it done. So if I teach you a new competency, it better increase flow or outcomes, but most likely it's gonna target flow. Meanwhile, if flow increases, so now, so notice if we had a dashboard, this would start to move, then this would start to move, right? Um, and then finally, if competency and flow both move, that's the only chance you'll have at ever seeing the outcomes move. So the three metrics together on a single dashboard are like another dashboard, and, and it's a leading indicator. Competency is the leading indicator. Flow is a second leading indicator because it is not direct in this value, and then the outcomes are, in fact, true lagging measures of value. But seeing them move is very gratifying. When I show to a, to a client, hey, look, your competencies are starting to grow. Hey, look, your flows are starting to grow. Hey, look, your outcomes. It's kind of a great cascade. So that's kind of the idea here. I'll leave it to you to read the rest of it. But I just find this very exciting. I'm going to jump into some of my own work now. Um, so here on the right on the uh, right side is what um, the Agile Shoebox has. On the left side, we have competency flow and outcomes. On the right, we call this engagement. Engagement was how much are you engaging in experimentation? And in the Agile mindset, we're always experimenting. Instead of flow, we have team because we don't just look at flow. We look at other kinds of team metrics. And instead of outcomes, we call them results. But these are twins. Okay, So they're almost the same kind of a model. I found that very exciting. So here's your strategy. And I just talked about this. You create a dashboard and look, increasing competency should increase flow or outcomes. Increasing flow should increase outcomes. And finally, increasing outcomes should improve your actual product. And that's the whole point of all this in the first place. Um, and it, you can see these as leading indicators. Competency increases first, flow second, and outcomes take the longest. So then um, I have in here just some examples. Um, you can pause it and take a look. But um, Scrum Teams, I have four different metrics that I track. Also, you'll notice for every metric I write, I always show you the goal for that metric. And it's not always a number. Like here, 80 to 95%, I know that number. But in other cases, the number isn't what matter. It's the trend. Every metric should have a goal, either as a numerical or as a trend direction. So you can see here, velocity per, per sprint. My goal is for that to be flat. The velocity should be stable or ascending, getting faster, right? Um, Kanban teams. And then I even have some things here for scale teams, teams who are doing uh, teams of teams working together to get something done, but trying to stay agile. So you can see here, say-do ratio. You'll see that a lot on here. What you say, is it what you did? Basically, it's a predictability metric. Um, and then, oh, this part is going away. Look at that, live action, making the assets better. Okay, uh, then there's competency and engagement. So 
This one is my favorite one. It's how many experiments are those teams running? And we actually track that. All these metrics, I've tracked them in Jira. I've tracked them in Microsoft AEO. Um, and any other tool can track these as automatic dashboards. So how many experiments are these teams running? And what is the impact of those? You can also do things like uh, team agile maturity. Um, so that's like what Safe likes to do uh, or Net Promoter Score. Also, almost every coach has some kind of a maturity assessment. Uh, and finally, with the outcomes, I do have an article on Equip, which is, uh, and you can see my timer has just run out, so let me wrap it up. Um, I have uh, an article on how to measure any product uh, and you trend over time, engagement, quality, predictability, and productivity. If you Google Tech Beacon Magazine uh, and look for just Tech Beacon Magazine Crane, you'll see all the articles I've written, including one. It used to be called uh, QP, now it's equipped, but the, the articles are largely helpful. And finally, the last piece of this, there's also another article at that Tech Beacon site on hypothesis testing. This one says everything, you know, we keep running experiments to make ourselves better. How do we know which ones are working? And we keep, and every feature you build, every story you write for your product, those are experiments too. You think they're going to make your product better, but we don't know if they are. And we invest way too much money in a bad idea and never pivot off of it. We get no ROI and lots and lots of spend. We want to avoid that. We do that by treating every feature, every story, if it's a self-improvement or whether it's a product improvement, we treat that as an experiment. And so here, this ID article teaches you how to measure any experiment. And basically, you look at your four KPIs, EQPP, and you ask, which KPI will I increase or decrease if that's a good thing to decrease it? Am I going to enable a new kind of KPI that I never that I never had before or a new kind of functionality? Am I going to eliminate something that's costly and not valuable? And this maintained one is, let's say you improve productivity. You don't want to decrease quality at the same time. Anyway, my time box is up. I'm going to do a separate video on Equip, a separate video on IDEAM, just getting you here. So if you want to learn more, either read those articles or look for those upcoming videos. And that's my time.